chief guest and esteemed dignitaries for the day with a round of applause. Good morning and welcome to one and all present here. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to our first ever career fair event at Don Bosco High School, Matunga. Don Bosco High School, Matunga, in collaboration with the Global Education Solution, had launched their EdTech Solution, Mike and Show, since 2016 from grades 7 to 10th. It focuses on curriculum agnostic integrated well being skills and career development. The career fair presents the efforts of our students to help their peers achieve their goals in securing the future job that corresponds to their personality. The career fair has given our students an occasion where they are about to showcase the opportunities, future reputable sectors and well-established companies, acknowledgement and realization of the upcoming sectors in the near future will surely inspire our students to work hard and commit to their pursuit of their future goals. The theme of this annual career fair is India in 2030, future careers in growth industries. We at Don Bosco High School strive to instill in our students the interest to pursue their dreams. Teaching students to seize the day and explore every opportunity will no doubt help them in their path to success. We welcome our chief guest for this event, our rector and principal, Reverend Father Crispino de Souza. <laughs> he has been a keen enthusiast about students venturing into newer areas of research. His vigilance and leadership qualities has been of immense assistance to our students. Mrs. Varda Pensi. She is a strategic HR consultant and leadership coach with overall 34 years of experience. Currently an independent HR consultant and a bo board member. She is mentor to companies as well as education institutes and trust. Welcome, Mrs. Varda. We request Reverend Father Crispino to welcome our esteemed chief guest, Mrs. Varda Pinse, with a bouquet of flowers. Chitra George, marketing and business development professional with over 16 years of experience in various industries. Since 2014, she has been a part of chambers of commerce and industry, trade associations and councils. Welcome, Ma'am Chitra. We request Reverend Father Crispino to welcome guest Mrs. Chitra George with a bouquet of flowers. Mrs. Raquel Shroff, co-founder and CEO of Global Education Solution, who is an expert in international education and garners 27 years of rich experience in consulting, English language testing, client management, and career development. Mrs. Raquel is also a chairperson of the Indian Career Education and Development Council, a non-profit organization which serves as a professional body for teachers counselors and professionals engaged in career transition of young people. We request Reverend Father Crispino to welcome our esteemed guest, Mrs. Raquel Shroff, with a bouquet of flowers. We dedicate this event 
to our late Father Bernard Fernandez, who set out with his career guidance program at Todd Bosco High School in the year 2016. His foresight and his creative insights have helped us in our journey so far. His contribution towards this institution is immeasurable, and we are greatly indebted for the time he spent at Don Bosco High School, Matunga, and we are bereaved as we miss his presence here among us today. Light symbolizes knowledge, which removes ignorance. It exemplifies lasting wealth, by which countless deeds could be achieved. It signifies the enlightenment, experience, hope, and love. We will now light the lamp, requesting our chief guest, Reverend Father Crispino de Souza, Mrs. Raquel Shroff, Mrs. Varda Pensi, and Mrs. Chitra George, our vice principal, Mr. Cliff Richard de Souza, our AHM, Mrs. Christina Mascarinis, supervisor of Standard 9 and 10, Mrs. Reshma Belgaonkar, to come forward and light the lamp. <laughs> Father and our esteemed dignities. Our school band boys have secured a feather in their cap by winning the first place all over India at the banded competition conducted by the Furtado School of Music. Their stellar performances at these happening events have been marveled at by many. Kudos to our talented band players and Mr. Sabi Franco. The band will adorn us with El Cumbachero and Rassi Canelo.
Let us all give a cheering ovation for our young band players on their fabulous performance. We invite Reverend Father Crispino to address the gathering. I'm the opening batsman. Okay, good morning to all and welcome to this first career fair 2023 year at Don Bosco Matunga. We are having many firsts in the school this year. Uh, we just concluded our annual day. And uh, for the first time, the band played live music for the annual day. We always had music that was recorded. And it was Father Bernard's greatest wish that uh, you know, music play was played live, which we managed to achieve for this annual day. And now this is the second first, the career fair, uh, which I hope will continue as an annual event in the years to come. Let me first welcome our two dignitaries here present, uh, Mrs. Varda and Mrs. George. Uh, thank you so much for coming to Don Bosco's and uh, taking part in this uh, career fair with your expertise. I'm sure you will have much to share uh, from your field of uh, where you have worked. Miss uh, Raquel Shroff is no guest to Don Bosco's. Yeah. So I want to thank her very specially for all the years of hard work she has put in in this field of career education. Uh, I know her for many more years than what she's been here in Matunga. And uh, I think it's a great uh, job that she's doing, educating children all over India. You know, uh, she is involved in many institutions uh, in the field of career education. So thank you so much, Raquel, for all the hard work that is put in along with your team at Mike and Show. And a special word of thanks to the staff in the school who is involved in teaching Mike and Show. And of course, you, my dear students, who will be uh, doing your presentations today, I wish you all the best. Now, just to give you a small message on uh, this career fair day that we are celebrating today. I don't know if you have ever reflected the difference between a career and a vocation. Yeah. A career is some job that you do or a number of jobs that you do that will help you earn a living in life. Yeah. So that is what you have been studying these years. You started the program in the 8th standard or 7th standard? In the 7th. So 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th. Yeah. It will help you decide, choose a career, a job that will help you earn some money so that you can have a good life. What is a vocation? Never thought of it. A vocation comes, the word vocation comes from the Latin word vocare. Vocare is to call. So a vocation is a calling. And I believe that each of us, both you and me, God calls us to a special way of life. Whatever it is. For me, it was the priesthood. So I chose that as my vocation. Yeah, that was my calling. For some of you, God may call you to do different things in life. No? 
Now the difference between a career and a vocation is a career may give you a lot of money. Yeah. Give you a big lifestyle but not necessarily will make you happy. But I can assure you this, if you follow your vocation, whether it is becoming an engineer, a doctor, a priest, uh, coming up the staircase, I saw so many uh, careers that are available to you today. No? But if you choose a vocation that God is calling you to, then you may not earn so much money in that vocation that you follow. But this I can assure you that you will be happy all your life doing what God wants you to do. And ultimately, it is not how much money we have in the pocket or in the banks. It is how much of happiness we have in our hearts. There are people who are doing careers, not because they want to do that, but because they have compulsions of family, compulsions of tradition, compulsions of culture. But that is not what they really wish to do, what they like to do. But a vocation, what God calls you is what God has gifted you with in your life. And that is your calling. It may not be acceptable sometimes even to your parents and to your near and dear ones. But if you follow your calling, be assured you will be happy in your life. And the second thing is when you choose a career, it is very important to see the ethics of that career. At what cost are you following that career? No. Sometimes we get so lost in our careers that we do our careers at the cost of our family, at the cost of our health, at the cost of the environment. And that's a very heavy price to pay, pay for. Yeah. So, as we have the first career fair, no, uh, I'd like you to reflect on these things because tomorrow you will go out in the world, you will choose a career and I hope that career also will be your vocation in life. Thank you. Thank you, Father. The technology-driven world in which we live is a world filled with promise but also challenges. Cars that drive themselves, machines that read x-rays, and algorithms that respond to customer service inquiries are all manifestations of powerful new forms of automation. Yet even as these technologies increase productivity and improve our lives, their use will substitute for some work activities humans currently perform, a development that has sparked much public concern. The results reveal a rich mosaic of potential shifts and occupations in the years ahead, which will have important implications for workforce skills and wages. A key finding is that while there may be enough work to maintain full employment to 2030 under most scenarios, the transition will be very challenging. Even where jobs do disappear, the opportunities brought about by automation and AI will lead to other job opportunities becoming available. Many of these jobs will be in new industries and sectors created as a direct result of using AI. Now, let's begin with our presentations for the day.
telecommunication. The telecommunications industry is divided into following subsectors infrastructure, equipment, mobile virtual network operators, white space spectrum, 5G, telephone service providers, and broadband. Over the last seven years, the Indian telecom tower industry has grown significantly by 65%. A very warm welcome to all our delegates, management, teachers, and students. Today we are going to present to you one of the most fastest growing industries in the entire world, the telecom industry. We have got Ayan Khan, Aditya Kotian, and Stash DeCosta, who are going to tell us more about this industry. So before we begin, let us ask a brief understanding about the telecom sector. Let me give some information on it. Basically, telecommunication refers to sending and receiving of messages using an electrical device. It passes transmitting voice, video, data, internet, and other communications. With 1.16 billion subscribers, India is the second largest telecom market in the world and has experienced rapid expansion in recent years. India will require 22 million skilled people in 5G focused fields including robotics, cloud computing, internet of things and artificial intelligence. Wow, now that's some really great information about this sector, isn't it? So, is the telecom sector just one big industry? No, there are innumerable sectors in the telecom industry. They include digital marketing engineer, software engineering, entrepreneur and many more. Yes sir, but sir, as you know, the world is growing rapidly. Every day you get to hear that jobs which were earlier done by humans are now being done by machines and robots. So what do you foresee for the youth of this future? I add on to it. Advances in digital technology and the increasing demands of customers will spark a rapid transformation in the telecom industry. Everything will be driven by software and artificial intelligence. Companies have discarded outdated technologies and have forged new relationships, making them global but specialized. So let's start preparing for the future of the telecom industry in 2030 now. Oh. So could you please list a few sectors that are inactive by at present but would be active by 2030? Well, let's move on to our first sector, quantum computing. What is quantum computing, sir? Engineers will employ quantum computing for practical applications such as quantum physics simulation, weather forecasting, medicine discovery, traffic optimization and interplanetary transport in 2030 when it will have made major strides. Additionally, it will serve as a catalyst for the development of other industries such as artificial intelligence. Early in the 2030s, quantum computing will pose a threat to classical cryptography that is coding and industries related to it such as blockchain, financial transactions, etc. So, we need to be careful because this will lead to significant changes and upheaval. So sir, what are the education qualifications required to pursue quantum computing? Well, let's know more about it by taking a look at the PPT. So basically, if one wants to pursue quantum computing, he needs to have a background in physics, mathematics and computer science. Now, let's move on to our second industry. AI-driven software development. AI-driven software development, what is that? Well, although AI-driven software development tools do not yet have a lot of power, they will soon be a popular topic like code completion, test generation, end-to-end -end testing, database modeling, CI or CD, etc. would be a huge help to software developers in the 2030s. The artificial intelligence will generate the source code together with unit, integration and experience.
acceptance tests and developers would only need to describe method names and fields, recreate the source code with CI or CD and integration along with acceptance tests. With the aid of AI, developer experience and developer productivity would be much higher in the 2030s. So how does one become an AI developer? For that, let's have a glance at the PPT. So basically, if one wants to pursue a job in artificial intelligence, one must be well versed in science and mathematics. Don't forget about LCNC. What is LCNC? LCNC, low code, no code, is a fresh movement that is gaining traction. It refers to development of a software using minimum skills and techniques. It refers to a development of a platform using minimum coding or no coding. By 2030, 70% of business appliances will use LCNC techniques. Wow, this was a really interesting discussion. We have learned about so many careers we can pursue a future in. Exactly, must say, technology in India is developing rapidly. There are industries like Telstra, Airtel, Reliance Geo, etc. in India that are growing rapidly. I would like to see India as a more developed nation by 2030. Well, that's all for today. This is Alan and Liam signing off. Hope you have a great day. Renewable energy. India's energy demand is expected to increase more than that of any other country in the coming decades due to its sheer size and enormous potential for growth and development. Therefore, it is imperative that most of this new energy demand is met by low carbon renewable sources. The Indian renewable energy sector is the fourth most attractive renewable energy market in the world. India was ranked fourth in wind power fifth in solar power and fourth in renewable power installed capacity as of 2020. Good morning everyone. We, the students of 9A, would like to present you before a presentation on renewable energy industry. Renewable energy is one of the most important topics of discussion nowadays and it is one of the most growing industries with loads of career opportunities. We will now watch a video on different career opportunities in renewable energy industry. Two experts who have just received their dual degree in engineering and energy systems and are now both working in Tata Power Renewable Energy Limited. Good morning, everyone. We are glad to have our two guests here in our midst who will enlighten our audience today. Sir, what made you choose this career and why? During my childhood days, I was interested in math and physics and had special interest in energy conservation. So I thought that energy engineering is the way to go. Why did you decide to go for a core engineering job that hardly one would choose? It was always something that I wanted to take up and I discovered that I was naturally good at it by taking Riasic test through my catch -up. Sir, what are the benefits of using renewable energy? There are many benefits of using renewable energy. Generating energy that produces no greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels and reduces some types of air pollution. Also creating an economic development and jobs in manufacturing, installation and more. What are the skills required to get into this field? Problem solving skills are the key skills required 
to get into this field. And if you want a core engineering job, then the skills consist from making different models to testing key elements. However, the skills vary according to your stream. Uh, for example, uh, skills required from the people of science stream may vary from the skills required from the people of uh, commerce stream. So the same skills vary according to your passion, interest. However, even if you don't have the skills, then you don't need to worry. You can apply for an internship, get trained for the job and then apply for a job. So, are there opportunities available to those who are passionate about this field? Yes, there are many opportunities available for those who are really passionate to make progress in this field, such as a renewable energy consultant, a nuclear engineer, an environmental specialist, and many more. What degree or qualification does a person need to work with renewable energy? With renewable energy degrees, graduates can build a promising career with energy studies. Also, universities are likely to promote energy studies in the coming years. And if you are pursuing a career in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering and maths, then it is dependent on your will that at what level you have to study. For example, even if you complete your bachelor's degree, you will definitely land up at a job in maintenance or manufacturing unit. However, if you want to work in the field of research or innovation, then you must definitely go for master's or doctorate level studies. Even though all the jobs don't require a degree. Even if you have a high school diploma, then you will get a job as a technician. What would you like to address the aspirants preparing to work in this field? A lot of focus and determination. And one of the most important thing, passion. Thank you for your valuable time, sir. Truly, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The Indian banking industry has recently witnessed the rollout of innovative banking models like payments and small finance banks. In recent years, India has also focused on increasing its banking sector's reach through various schemes like the Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana and post payment banks. Schemes like these, coupled with the major bank sector, reform the digital payment, neo banking a rise of Indian MBFCs and Fintech have significantly enhanced India's financial inclusion and helped fuel the credit cycle in the country. Good morning, respected principal, judges and dignitaries, supervisors, teachers and my dear friends. We are from class 90 and going to explore the banking industry and the future of banking industry. Banking industry is one of the leading industries in India. Banking is an industry which deals with credit facilities, storage of cash, investments and other financial transactions. Banking industry is one of the key drivers of most economics because it channels funds to borrowers with productive investments. But does anyone know how it works? Yes, I know. Banks lend money by making advances to customers on current accounts, by making investment loans and by investing in marketable debt, securities and other forms of money lending. Banks provide different payment services and a bank account is considered indispensable by most businesses and individuals. Types of banks Banks are financial institutions that perform deposit and lending functions. There are various types of banks in India and each is responsible to perform the different functions. The three main types of banks are government banks, private sector banks and circular banks. Also, there are MBFCs and the companies who are focused on it. But does anyone know which skills are required to get a job in banking? Yes, I know. There are numerous lucrative jobs available in banks which offer high salary and job security. But preparing for a career in banking generally means getting graduated with a degree in finance, economics, banking, commerce and cracking bank exams. The minimum qualification needed for a job in banking is a bachelor's degree in commerce or management related specializations. Further, for banking jobs, you will have to study quantitative aptitude, general awareness, reasoning, English and basic computing skills to ace bank exams. Also, in future 2030, we will require all these qualities and also require knowledge of artificial intelligence and the robotics. 
because by that time all banks will be using these techniques. Banks do know when this qualification do require various skills to become a successful banker like customer dealing, customer satisfaction, analytical skills, good knowledge of numbers and accounts, meta mathematics, communication skills, patience, attention to minute details, confidence, critical thinking, technical skills, stress management, resilience. But does anyone know which types of jobs are currently available in banking? Yes, there are various types of jobs available in banks. Financial analyst, personal financial advisor, relationship manager, accountant, auditor, branch manager, loan officer, collector, bank teller and treasurer. Does anyone know what will happen in the future of the banking industry? Future banking industry will be jobs will be not be there and many other jobs will be there available. The banking industry will use modern and smart digital technology. This jobs in 2030 in banking and finance. In 2030, there will be more demand for the persons who can use technology in a smart way and who can prevent and detect fraud and be more in demand. As banking industry will use artificial intelligence for advisory services and teller machines to withdraw and deposit money. So, jobs for artificial intelligence and maintaining these machines will be more in demand in banking in 2030. Now, will banking be a good career? Yes, banking is one of the most popular and on-demand careers in the world and even in the digital era. Banks have adapted to newer high-tech ways of customer servicing with online banking apps, digital transactions and more. It will surely be never out of trend as we will always need banks and financial professionals to manage our financial requirements and savings in an efficient manner. Now we would like to show you the video Future of Banking in 2030. In the near future, banks will be invisible. Banking will be more intertwined in the lives of consumers than ever before. Accessing banking services anytime, anywhere, without the need to queue in a bank. Banking is in the palm of your hand. Traveling smarter with cashless multi-currency exchange, mobile payment, and more through all-in-one e-wallet. Get personalized offers and product promotions in the right place at the right time. Smart banking opens up a new world of possibilities. Faster payment system enables instant interbank transfer and real-time P2P payments. Education sector. India's education industry is among the largest in the world and plays a significant and remedial role in balancing the socio-economic fabric of the nation. This is why education is the core to the Indian government's master plan to promote long-term economic growth. India has a vast formal education industry with institutions established to service the educational needs of each age cohort covering the preschool period, the K-12 school years, and higher education and research. E-learning is now also a key emerging segment. Good morning, respected Reverend Father, esteemed guests, teachers, and my dear friends. We, the class of 9th F, present to you our education sector. India occupies a significant position in the global education sector. One of the largest institutions of higher learning is found in India. With 26.31% of India's population between the ages of 0 to 14 years, India's education sector provides several potential for expansion. In India, the education system consists of formal education from kindergarten to standard 12, university education, education provided after formal education, and vocational and industrial training. 
the market for the education sector consists of primary, secondary and high schools as well as universities, colleges and vocational training centers. So let the show begin. In 3, 2, 1, we, we present to you Karan, our own host and ghost. Hello everyone. Today we are going to decimate info for the education industry of our very own country, Bharat. With us, we have an extremely concerned father and a career counselor from the industry. Hello, Mahesh Anandit. And not to mention the education missionary himself, who just so happens to be my very close friend. Let me introduce you to Mr. Goyal. Karan, these industries feel like a rat race. Everywhere I go, the same job opportunities pop up. I think I appeal to my daughter, Alia. It's not like that. You just have to look in the right places. Tell me, Mahesh, what is Alia good at? Well, Alia has decided to enter the education sector, but she has no idea about the job opportunities and, and careers. Hmm. She could become a teacher, instructional designer, or even an education administrator. What does an instructional designer do? Instructional designers are paramount in the, folk, uh, in the process of learning. In the process of learning, they are good at redeveloping courses and online learning simulations. Is instructional designer a tech job? Yes, of course. Instructional designer holds degrees like education, technological, business, education and computer science. What is the future of instructional designer in education sector? future of education is hybrid that is that is instructional designer will be indispensable in our institution can you explain what the education administrator is gandhi ji once said that be the change be the change that you want to see in the world you can be the change by pursuing a career in education administration and education administrator evaluations and data analysis to ensure excellent performance of a student. Some of the roles are vice principal, principal, supervisor, chief academic officer, etc. What are the educational qualifications needed for it? The qualifications needed for it is PG in business, marketing, finance, human resource management, and business management. Aditya, you mentioned teacher. The job of the teacher seems pretty basic. How will it help Alia in the future? Karan, do you know a teacher's job is evergreen? Even in the pandemic, the jobs of teacher did not stop. Oh my god. Oh, stop it, Karan. The future for teaching is very bright. You see, in the near future, things like online teaching, subject-based te subject teaching, and skill-based teaching will be the new thing as per the NEP 2020. Now what is this NEP 2020? Even I have read about it in the newspapers. Can you please tell me some of its features? So for that, let's have a look at the video. The main purpose of the NEP is to design a vision and framework for both school education and higher education in India. Let's look at some of the key proposals of the new education policy of 2020. The NEP proposes to change the school's academic structure. If you all know in India, the academic structure looks something like this. You had to do 10 plus 2 years of schooling. Now it has been restructured in 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 form, where the first 3 years are your preschool, which consists of KG, LKG and UKG. After preschool, when you go to first class and thereafter second class, together these five years are going to be your foundation for your education. After that three years, that is from class three to five, will be part of your preparatory or primary schooling. Followed by another three years, that is from class six to eight, that will be your middle schooling. And finally, four years, that is from class nine to class 12, is going to be your secondary schooling. So together it forms a five plus three plus three plus four academic structure. If you notice, children from ages 3 to 5 years have been included in the formal education system for the first time. Previously, you could directly join class 1 without going to a preschool. 
Anyhow, the idea behind this is to have early childhood care and education, basically the foundation of learning. Another provision that we get to see in this new policy is that there will be no hard separations between arts and sciences, between curricular and extracurricular activities, between vocational and academic streams, etc. to eliminate harmful hierarchies among and silos between different areas of learning. I'll tell you the meaning behind this. If you look at the subjects of the arts, they are history, geography, psychology, English, political science, sociology, anthropology, economics, etc. Together all these subjects come under the arts category. Under arts there are subcategories like liberal arts, social sciences and creative arts. Now coming to the hard science subjects, they include physics, chemistry, biology, geology, astronomy and botany. You can also call them STEM subjects. Science and technology, engineering and math. As per the new education policy, there will be no hard separation between arts and sciences. I don't know whether you are aware of this, but in recent times there is somewhat clash between soft science and hard science. In other words, hard facts of nature and the soft facts of nature. The social scientists believe in something which the doctors and hardcore scientists don't believe in. They don't agree with it and vice versa. There are always these contradictions between both the parties. Apart from that, this holistic approach is aimed to ensure the students overall development where they not only learn what's in their syllabus but also learn essential life skills. Wow, that's so futuristic. It should measure productivity and not for test scores. It should teach lifelong learning and focus on entrepreneurship as a global language. Teachers are the foundation of every institution and we are proud to be in Don Bosco High School, Matunga. So thank you for joining us on this journey on exploring the education sector. We hope that you will be inspired to take up a career in this sector. Sports industry The sports industry of India is nearly a century old and holds a prominent position in the global market. The industry has flourished, driven by a work skill force, hence known for its role in creating employment and contributing to the country's economy. The industry employs more than 500,000 people. Good morning to everyone present here. Have you ever been told that sports can only be a hobby and not a long time career after grade 10? Well, that's not true. We, the students of class 9B, are here to share you some exciting insights about the dynamic sports industry. Let us first understand sports industry. The sports and recreation industry spans all aspects of professional and amateur sports as well as recreation and adventure sports. The industry includes sports clubs, sports associations, marketing agencies, physical therapy centers, training centers, and a lot more. The Indian sports industry in 2022 is estimated at at least 5,894 crores. You can claim 37% share of the sports sponsorship required. Let us know what's a small skit. Have you thought about what job you are going to do after passing out of college? I want to do a job related to sports as sports is my passion. Yes, me too. Nowadays, there are many innovations being used in the sports industry such as drones, biometric sensors, wearable technology for the athletes and a lot more. So one having technical knowledge can get a career in this field. Wow, that's amazing. Hey guys, do you know that in many popular World Cups, the third umpire is not a living person, but a computer that helps to make an accurate decision? Yes, it is interesting to see technology meeting sports. We can find more information about the sports industry on the internet. 
and according to my research, the information that I have found is in the sports industry, there are many different career opportunities like athletic trainer, sports coach, athletic director, physical therapist, medical assistant, sports journalist, sports marketing professional and you can take all these career options after taking science or commerce streams in college. You can learn more about it on the Market Show website. What are the education qualifications one needs to take a job role in the sports industry? To pursue a career in the sports industry, you can look forward to taking a degree in sports coaching, sports management or sports science. However, more than a degree, your experience in the field and an exhaustive knowledge of the game are valued. Also, undergraduate courses include Bachelor of Arts in Sports Management, B.Sc. in Sports Science, B.Sc. in Sports and Recreation Management, Bachelor of Sports Management and a lot more. Do we need any skills for it? Just like passing the ball? Yes, of course. Skills required to be in the sports industry mainly are leadership, time management, competition and sportsmanship and commitment. Guys, I am all about profit. How much will I earn being in this field? Average starting salary of a sports manager in India is around 2.8 lakhs per year. One year of minimum experience is required to be a sports manager. The highest salary a sports manager can earn in India is around 11.4 lakhs per year. But one needs to work hard to earn this. Thank you guys. It was a good talk that we had today. But I have to go home and study for my upcoming exam. Guys, even I think we should leave now as it is getting late. Bye guys, bye guys. the benefits of sports uh, it keeps you physically and mentally fit and it helps you to build team together. An overall development of the body you get mentally fit as well as physically fit it is very good for children from the age of 9 to 16 what according to you are the great challenges that people face in sports industry the first thing is economic factors for example, for a game like tennis, it's a very expensive game. So at a school level, maybe you can, uh, you will be able to afford it. But as you gradually grow step by step, it starts getting expensive because you have to go to other states to play your matches and all. Then uh, some people, because of higher education, higher studies, they have to give up their sports. Then inconsistency, start and then stop for better prospects. And last, it's a lack of motivation. What qualifications do you need to be in the field of sports, especially as a sports coordinator? Uh, biggest qualification is the right attitude and the passion for sports. And uh, maybe after you finish your graduation, a uh, specialized uh, course, particularly from any recognized uh, college, should be more than enough for you. See the high-tech equipment which you just saw, which is which I am surrounded with, will definitely help you to develop and make you a better and strong sportsman. Then we have trainers like the one which is with me. Definitely with their guidance and help, you will surely become a better person. You have to make all this equipment also easily available for the lower class who are really good in sports, who are really very tough. If we give them the proper guidance, they will become better sportsmen. What is your message to the coming youth? Love sports and stay fit. So whether you are a player, a coach, a fan, or simply someone who appreciates the value of sports, remember that it can have a powerful and meaningful impact on our lives. By 2030, according to us, sports will be appreciated all around the world, and making a career in sports would be much easier. So always remember, do not give up and keep striving hard, and one day you can surely achieve your dream. Thank you.
technology in India has strengths across the entire value chain from fiber, yarn, fabric to apparel. It is highly diversified industry with a wide range of segments ranging from products of traditional handloom, handicrafts, wool and silk products, etc. Good morning one and all. We, the students of class 9C, would like to start with a short skit on textile industry in the year 2030. The settings is a futuristic textile factory in the year 2030. The stage is set with rows of automated machines producing textile products. The workers are working in the station while the supervisor keeps an eye on the entire operation. All right, everyone, let's keep up the pace. We have a lot of orders to fulfill today. This is so boring. I wish we could just sit back and relax while machine do all this work. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Actually, you might be surprised to know that we are already on the way to making that happen. With the advancements in artificial intelligence and automation, Machines are becoming more and more efficient. Really? You mean we don't have to work anymore? Not exactly. You will still be needed to oversee the operation and make sure everything runs smoothly. But the machines will be able to handle the repetitive and mundane tasks, allowing you to focus on more important things. Like what? Like quality control, creative design, and customer service. Our customers are looking for more unique and customized products that they can't get from mass produced items. And that's where you come in. You will use your expertise and creativity to create products that are tailor-made for each individual customer. That sounds amazing. I always wanted to try my hands at design. And I would love to work with customers and help them find the perfect product. That's the spirit. With the help of our machines, we can make the textile industry more expertise and more personalized than ever before. The worker is returned to their station with renewed enthusiasm and energy. The machines hum quietly in the background, producing high quality textiles at a lightning fast pace. The textile industry is affected by various external factors that fall under the pastel framework, which stands for political, economical, social, technological, environmental and legal factors. Some of the important factors that affect the textile industry are as follows. Political factors. The political factors, it includes the government policies, regulations and laws. Economical factors. Economical factors include the, it includes the trust, lifestyle and the trends of a society that can affect the textile industry. The social factors. In social factors, the government policies and regulations can affect the textile industry as well as the values, beliefs, lifestyle and the trends can affect the textile industry. Technological factor. The use of technology can impact the textile industry in several ways like the advances in manufacturing technology, digitalization, Automation and the Internet of Things can impact the textile industry in several ways. Environmental factors, concerns about sustainability and the, ex the increasingly affecting textile industry, the like use of natural resources, water and energy consumption, waste and pollution can impact the, can impact the textile industry in several ways. Legal environment, legal environment can impact the textile industry like laws and regulation around intellectual property, customer protection, labor standards and the environmental protection can impact the tactile industry. The textile industry has undergone significant changes in the recent years and are likely to be further transformation in the coming decade. Here are some of the current trends and predictions for the textile industry in the year 2030. Sustainability. There's a growing focus on sustainability within the textile industry with companies and consumers placing more emphasis on eco-friendly and ethical manufacturing processes. Digitalization, the use of technology is increasing in the textile industry with, with developments in areas such as 3D printing, artificial intelligence, automation, etc. 
fast fashion. The fast fashion trend has had a significant impact on the textile industry, with companies producing clothes and textiles quickly and cheaply to meet the demands of the consumers. E-commerce. The rise of e-commerce has led to a significant change in the way of how people shop for clothes, with online shopping becoming more popular. Now that we've seen the current trends, let's look at the predictions for the textile industry in 2030. Changing consumer behavior. Consumer behavior is likely to have changed significantly with greater emphasis on sustainability and ethical fashion, a shift away from fast fashion. New materials. There may be new materials developed for the use in the textile industry, such as those made from lab-grown or plant-based sources. Overall, the textile industry is likely to continue to evolve and adapt to changing consumer demands and technological advancements with sustainability and digitalization likely to, likely to be the key focus areas. The textile industry is undergoing a significant transformation driven by advances in technology, increasing demand for sustainable and ethical fashion and changes in consumer behavior. Some of the future jobs that could emerge in the textile industry by the year 2030 include sustainable fashion designer with increasing awareness about the environmental impact in the fashion industry, 3D printing technicians. 3D printing technology is increasingly being used in the textile industry to create prototype molds and even finished products. Digital fabric technologies. Digital fabric technology, which involves integrating the electronics into fabrics, is becoming more common. Material scientists. The development of new material, including biodegradable and sustainable material, will need expertise of the material scientist. Textile recycling specialist. As the demand for sustainable fashion grows, textile recycling is increasingly important. Virtual reality designing. Virtual reality technology is being used in textile industry to create virtual prototypes and designs. Employers in the textile industry may be looking for candidates with a range of skills, qualifications depending upon the job. Some of the things that employers in the textile industry may be looking for in their candidates are technological knowledge. Technological knowledge in textile industry is essential. Employers in the textile industry may be looking for candidates with knowledge in technological skills, technological production, textile manufacturing, etc. A textile designer. A textile designer creates designs, patterns for fabric, clothing and other textile products. They must have a strong sense of color, composition and a style, as well as knowledge of different textile materials. Uh, Quality control manager. A quality control manager is responsible for ensuring that all textile products meets industries for standard, quality, safety, and durability. Sales representative. A sales representative is responsible for promoting and selling textile products to, re to retailers, wholesalers, and other customers. They must have excellent communication and interpersonal skills, as well as knowledge in the textile industry and market trends. Textile engineer. A textile engineer is responsible for designing and developing uh, new textile products and manufacturing processes. They must have an excellent background in engineering and material sciences. This role is ideal for someone analytical, innovative, and someone who likes working on pro complex projects. Ultimately, the best fit job in the textile industry depends on an individual's unique set of skills, interests, and career goals. You must consider, you must carefully consider all the available options and then pick a role that aligns with your strengths and interests. Thank you. With that, we would like to end our presentation on the textile industry. We wish you happy careers ahead. Healthcare industry. Healthcare has become one of India's largest sector, both in terms of revenue and employment. 
healthcare comprises hospitals, medical devices, clinical trials, outsourcing, telemedicine, medical tourism, health insurance, and medical equipment. The Indian healthcare sector is growing at a brisk pace due to its shattering coverage, services, and increasing expenditure by public as well as private players. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kapil Sharma Show. Today is the first episode of Career Input Sessions. Our topic will revolve around jobs that will be in demand by 2030. So, we have three esteemed guests who will talk about how jobs will require technology as a must in the future. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome gynecologist Dr. Sean Shinde, biotechnologist Dr. Mayank Jadav, and biomedical engineer, Dr. Keith Waz. Welcome, esteemed speakers. This episode is going to be super useful for me and parents whose children are from the age of 13 to 15 years. I'm worried that my son will choose the wrong occupation because the jobs trending now may not be the same in the future. Any advice to the teens out there? Look, we are willing to help them as much as we can, Kapil. What jobs, according to y'all, have a chance of going extinct by 2030? You see, factors like globalization, urbanization, technological change, and environment sustainability, etc., will be the factors which will largely impact jobs by 2030. And jobs like medical transcriptionist, that can be automated, may disappear. Whereas jobs like wellness therapist are predicted to grow even though they have not used much technology. Dr. Sean, I was wondering what would be the future of a gynecologist by 2030? Look, the first thing is you need to have sufficient information about technology as it is used a lot in gynecology. For example, the Da Vinci machine is used in gynecological surgeries to be more accurate and precise. This Da Vinci machine is something I've heard for the first time. Many common people haven't heard of this machine even though it's really useful. These are the types of machines which will play a major role in the future. Jobs which won't have these types of machines which will make the task easy will likely be extinct in the future. Thank you, Dr. Sean. Now we move on to the audience. Any questions from the audience? Sir, how to exactly become a gynecologist? What is the process? Hmm. So this is the process of becoming a gynecologist. The first step is to earn an MBPS degree from a well-recognized medical institution. Then, appear for the neat entrance exam for taking admission in an MD course. In that MD course, choose gynecology as your specialization. Next is post-graduation and then doctor of medicine in gynecology and obstetrics for around three years. And voila, you're a gynecologist. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sean, for that valuable information. Now we move on to the second guest of the day, Dr. Mayank, who's been a biotechnologist for around 10 years now. So, Dr. Mayank, who exactly is a biotechnologist? Well, a biotechnologist is a scientist who studies biology and develops products and technologies based on the research. They can work with specific organisms only. This is something I've not heard of a lot. What is the main technology used in this industry? The main technology used in the industry of biotechnology is genetic engineering. This involves the manipulation of an organism genes by introducing, eliminating, or rearranging specific genes. This is done by using the methods of modern biology. These techniques also refer to as recombinant DNA techniques. Thank you, Dr. Mayer. Now we again move on to the audience. Any questions from the audience? So, how much time does it take to develop something like a vaccine? Well, typically, this type of research takes about 8 to 10 years as the genes of the virus mutates and fully changes the organism. We meet with multiple failures and problems, as the vaccine might not be the best suited for the organism. However, we saw during the COVID pandemic, the experiments had to be fast-tracked, as the world was waiting for a cure. Thank you, sir. I've noticed that a job of a biotechnologist is a work of patience. There will be many failures, but you never have to give up. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Now we move on to the last guest of the day. 
Dr. Keith Wallace, who's been a biomedical engineer. So Dr. Keith, who is the biomedical engineer? Biomedical engineers design and develop medical devices, equipment, and software. They work closely with doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals to create devices that improve patient outcomes. So all the tools and machines used for surgeries are made by biomedical engineers? You got that right. Biomedical engineers lend a helping hand by providing life-saving machines and technology. Thank you, Dr. Keith. Now we move on to the audience. Any more questions from the audience? Yes. So, sir, please can you tell me what were the difficulties you faced during this journey of yours and how did you tackle it? For the first few years, I had to study the fundamentals of maths, physics, chemistry, biology, and IT, as I needed an electrical engineering degree. Next, I had to do a four-year undergraduate B.Tech course. The problem was that during these years, maths wasn't my strong subject. And in order to become a biomedical engineer, you needed maths as a base. So I struggled with my math, but eventually I caught up with it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Keith, for that loads of information. And thank you, esteemed speakers, for taking time out of your busy schedules, for sharing information with us about your following industries. And audience, please stay tuned for more episodes. Infrastructure. Infrastructure sector is a key driver for the Indian economy. The sector is highly responsible for propelling India's overall development and enjoys intense focus from government for initiating policies that would ensure time-bound creation of world-class infrastructure in the country. Infrastructure sector includes power, bridges, dams, roads, and urban infrastructure development. In other words, the infrastructure sector acts as a catalyst for India's economic growth as it drives the growth of the allied sectors like townships, housing, built-up infrastructure, and construction development projects. Good morning to everyone. We, the class of 9B, Don Bosco High School Matunga, present to you a presentation on infrastructure through a panel discussion. So, Johan, what is infrastructure? Infrastructure could be defined as the set of interconnected facilities that provide a framework for the overall development of a country. The infrastructure sector is said to be the backbone of Indian economy. The infrastructure sector has various industries such as telecommunication, transport, and social infrastructure. So Advit, what is the future outlook on this industry? Infrastructure sector has become the biggest focus area for the government of India. India plans to spend $1.4 trillion on infrastructure. To have a sustainable development, the government has suggested $750 billion for railway infrastructure from 2018 to 2030. But in spite of growth in infrastructure in recent years, the major areas which require massive investment like include transportation, power and telecommunication. So Pantha, what are the future job opportunities in 2030? Infrastructure courses are available at undergraduate, postgraduate and diploma level. A 
Upon completion of infrastructure courses, there are opportunities for the candidates in the fields like facilities management, real estate finance, infrastructure finance, real estate investment businesses. Roles offered to these candidates are finance manager, project manager, consultant, etc. If you wish to become a project manager, you can do commerce and then BBUS with the help of PMI certificate. The average salary of an infrastructure project manager is 11 lakh per year. So Adil, what are the infrastructure courses, eligibility and entrance exam? The eligibility criteria for admission for the graduate course are Candidate must have passed 10 plus 2 or equivalent examination from a recognized board. Candidate who wish to take admission need to clear the entrance exam. Furthermore, the institution may conduct a group debate or interview for the selected candidates. So, Dev, could you tell us more on popular infrastructure entrance exam in this course? Particular such as CAT, SNAP, MAT, CMAT, CMAT, XAT, and MAT by GMAC. Infrastructure skill set. Candidates are required to have some skill set to action in the field. Some of them are analytical skill, technical skill, communication skill, knowledge of the subject, leadership skill, and management. So Chaitanya, what are the courses and average fees for it? Candidates may pursue BBA, MBA, or PGDM with his postgraduate diploma in management and infrastructure. The course fee for different programs is different. The average course fee for MBA is INR 1 lakh to 10 lakh. The average course fee for BBA is 1 lakh to 2 lakh. And PG diploma in infrastructure would cost candidates around 38,000 through distance value. So Johan, how would infrastructure help sustainable development? Sustainable infrastructure can help build resilience in countries and also will help to protect against extreme climate change events. An example of this kind of infrastructure is the railway industry. This reduces the amount of carbon emitting trucks on the road. The worldwide drive for economic growth and need for this kind of industry is there in both developed as well as developing countries. We would now like to show you a video on the types of the companies, on the types of companies that are working on infrastructure in India. Infrastructure play a crucial role in the generation of employment opportunities. They improve mobility, efficiency and productivity of labor. Moreover, larger investment, development of industry and agriculture create all more employment opportunities. Thank you. Media. The media industry is vast and ever growing with a wide variety of different roles available. Media is an incredibly popular sector at the minute and an in extremely interesting area to work in. From a classic newspaper to your Facebook homepage, it is safe to say that media is all around us. In this article, we are going to explore the global media industry and take a look at different media jobs along with their salaries and skills needed to get into them. Good morning Mumbai. We are your hosts and those for the day. Welcome to your favorite TV show, Famous Minds where we call guests from a certain industry to explain that industry in detail and also give a review about that industry in 2030. The education needed to get jobs in media are Bachelor of Science in Social Media, BA Communication and Journalist, BA Digital and Mass Media. What about media industry's market value? Media industry's market value is said to be around $100 billion before the year 2030. Isn't that shocking that the media industry alone will be $100 billion? 
That's really shocking. Also, the jobs in 2030 would be digital marketing, cloud computing, software engineer, artificial intelligence, cyber security, and many more. Let's move on to the special segment of this show, Pestil Factors. I would now like to call upon my executives to explain the Pestil Factors. Political factors. American giants like Facebook and Twitter are banned in China and North Korea due to the political conflicts between US and these countries. Economic factor. The current global economic crisis due to COVID-19 has forced consumers to reduce their budget to regular purchases of clothes, accessories and entertainment. Social factors. Social media industry is evident that the change in consumer behavior in recent years represents a valuable opportunity for the companies operating in these markets. Technological factor. The technological environment is the analysis of technological innovations in an industry. This technological development can represent huge opportunity or a source of threat to the company's activity. Environmental factors. Ecological influences refer to the new measures and standards regarding environmental protection and sustainable development. These ecological constraints are today's sources of serious threats that can endanger the survival of a company. Legal factor. Social networking sites like Facebook, the world's largest social network, contains a large amount of personal information of their users. As a result, these sites must follow and enforce some rules and regulations. So let's not waste your valuable time. Our first famous mind of the night is Mr. Tony Talawala. So Mr. Talawala, how are you feeling being here tonight? It's my honor to be here today. Thank you so much. Let's move on to our next guest, Mr. Harry Minati. He is a gamer and a hashtag influencer. Welcome sir. How are you feeling being here tonight? Are bro, I see this show daily, but I am feeling full HP now. Our next guest is Mr. Paneel Grover. <laughs> he is a director and also a news journalist. It's my privilege to be here. All right, India. Let's start the show with a big round of applause for our guest. So I need one of you to explain about the media industries in short. The first thing which comes in our mind after listening to the word media is what is media. Media is way to communicate with people, say our thoughts and listen to their thoughts too. What about the financial growth of this industry? The media industry has recorded very high growth even in the rooms of pandemic where an offline based industry like in aviation and logistics for competitive view. The media industry has valued over $60.2 billion and, media, uh, uh, and television industry has also recorded growth. 60,000 crores to 128,000 crores in the year 2020. The, the predicted market value will reach to 2,371 million dollars in upcoming years. I would also like to add on to that that the OTT platform sector is likely, li likely to grow from 2.6 billion US dollars to 16 billion US dollars in the coming years. Those were really positive numbers. Let's discuss about the jobs and job opportunities. So, I would request Mr. Harry Minati to explain about the employment statistics. Some of the jobs offered by the media industries are animator, editor, VFX handlers, gamer, influencer and other 4,781 jobs. I would request you all to explain about the various sunrise sectors of the media industry. The first sunrise sector on the list is digital media and gaming. Digital media. We all know that we have mobile phones in our pockets which have already installed applications such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. All these applications come under digital media. Digital media is also contributing a lot to India's GDP. Gaming is a sunrise sector for the youth of this country. India is ahead on the map of, on the, map of the earth in gaming. All the Indian gamers are, are like professionals in gaming. Streaming services and OTT platforms are all over the globe, especially during the pandemic. These two sectors were meeting money and uh, gaining all lots of profit. 
these two sectors have employed many people and giving them salaries up to 16 lakh rupees. We all use social media in our day-to-day -day life and have been playing a big role in our innovation and new startups. Digital marketing. Companies like Nike, Adidas, Reebok sell their retail products online with the help of applications through advertisements. The public views these advertisements and are redirected to their websites to buy, the, buy sneakers, headphones and many other products. Also, artificial intelligence is a sunrise sector for the world's economy. Artificial intelligence, whether it's Elon Musk's self-driven Tesla or Canada's hyperbole train, it's all artificial intelligence. Well, we all listen to music and podcast for entertainment or for knowledge, but it's a good sector for technical engineering and sound engineering. These two sectors have employed many people all over the India. The media and television industry took a lot of interest, but the equal amount of return as well. It's give job opportunities to so many people and have given so much profit. All right, India. It's time to say goodbye to our guests. Thank you for your valuable time. Powered by Mata Motors and Mari Silver Biscuits. Thank you. Defense sector. The Indian defense sector, the second largest armed force, is at the cusp of revolution. The government has identified the defense and aerospace sector as a focus area for the Atmanirbhar Bharat or Self Reliant India Initiative with a formidable push on the establishment of indi indigenous manufacturing infrastructure supported by requisite research and development e ecosystem. Good afternoon to our esteemed delegates, Father Crispino de Souza, teachers and my dear friends. Today, we the students of 9th M are going to present the defense sector. With us, we have Mr. Param. He is graduated from IIT Bangalore and an expert in cyber security. Next, we have Mr. Ashok. Next, we have Mr. Siddhar. He is a Lieutenant Commander in Navy. Jai Hind, sir. Thank you for joining the panel discussion. Thank you, sir, for inviting us to this prestigious event. Sir, we are honored that you have accepted our invitation. Sir, I have a doubt which has been arising in my mind for many years. Sir, is a defense miss only army Navy and Air Force uniform troops? Majority. Majority of people have this question in their mind. But no, it's not like this. The defense sector also includes robotics, cyber security, equipment design, designing suits for designing suits for soldiers who go on war field. Wow, really? But how? Talking from an ethical hacker's point of view, there are various nations who have experienced hackers who can identify the location of a place and ships. They can even take them under their control. They can even take out some confidential information pertaining to our national security. Hence, it is important to have a strong cyber security system in our country. In today's, in today's modern era, the war is about artificial intelligence and its protection. Mm -hmm. Now I understand how critical cyber security can be for the nation. Mr. Ashok, I have a question and you are the best one to answer. How is an entrepreneur related to the defense? Me being an electrical engineer, our team designs and provides various instruments, various equipments and different types of components for the defense sector. This is exactly how an entrepreneur is connected to the defense industry. So our young futuristic entrepreneurs can serve our country on the same lines. But what is the process of electrical engineering? Getting into electrical engineering is very easy. We can join from a variety of courses including MBS, Bachelor's in Engineering and uh, MENG, etc. Bachelor's courses usually take about 3 or 5 years with a separate master's course taking about 1 or 2 years. This is a very long process, sir. Knowledge is an investment that will always be the fruit of profit if used rationally. This is a very unique way to serve our country. Let us present the short video of Navy.
covering the seas. Shaping the future for my country. Rising to quell the unforeseen. I am. Combat ready. Credible. Cohesive. And a future proof force. A great day has dawned. One that will go down in history. For I have taken great strides towards becoming Atmanirbhar, self-reliant. I achieved an unprecedented milestone with the commissioning of India's first indigenous aircraft carrier. Designed by the Warship Design Bureau. Constructed at the Cochin Shipyard Limited. And named after her most illustrious predecessor, INS Vikrant, the hero of the 90s. So, which stream should they take after 10 to join the Navy? So, after 10, they have to opt for science stream. In 12, they have to choose PCM as a subject physics, chemistry and mathematics. After clearing their board exams, they have to clear, uh, they have to appear for you know, National Defense Academy entrance examination. If you qualify, you have to appear for sele uh, services selection board and medical examination. Oh, wait a minute, there is a second option too. Naval, if you are in Naval Wing, Senior Division, NCC, C certificate holder with BE or B Tech. You don't need to take any written examination. You directly, you can directly go for SSB interview. After that, you have to undergo medical examination. If you are fit, you are directly inducted in Indian Navy. Thank you, sir, for giving a valuable piece of information. Thank you, all the panelists, for joining this discussion. Have a good day ahead. Thank you. Hospitality. India being one of the most tra popular travel destinations across the globe has resulted in the Indian tourism and hospitality industry to emerge as one of the key drivers of growth among the service sectors in India. Tourism industry in India has significant potential considering that tourism is an important source of foreign exchange in India similar to other countries. Good afternoon, respected principal, judges, dignitaries, supervisor, teachers, and my dear friends. We are from class 90 and going to explore the hospitality industry and the future of hospitality industry in 2030. The hospitality industry is a broad category of fields within the service industry that includes lodging, food and beverages, event planning, theme parks, travel, and tourism. It includes hotels, restaurants, tourism agencies, and cruise lines. Also, the hospitality and tourism industry is a vast sector that includes all the economic activities that directly or indirectly depend upon travel and tourism. Derek, can you tell us about hospitality in simple words? Sure. Although a modern day version of hospitality looks different than it did thousands of years ago, it still follows one main theme, to provide guests with services and guests do more than just make a pitch talk at hospitality businesses these days. Many hospitality businesses are now seen as destinations themselves. It is the relationship between a guest and the host, when the host receives some amount of goodwill, including reception and entertainment of the guest, visitor or stranger. Does anybody know why is this industry named as hospitality industry? Yes, I know a brief history of hospitality industry. It was derived from the Latin word hospice, which means both visitors and strangers. Hospitality has its roots in ancient history. Can anyone 
hospitality? What are the businesses covered in hospitality industry? Yes, there are various businesses that are covered in hospitality businesses such as hotel, resort, tour operator, airline and cruise line. But Dakshit, do you know what is the goal of hospitality industry? Yes, I know. The goal of hospitality industry is to provide customers with an enjoyable experience. Whether that enjoyment comes from eating a good meal, relaxing in a luxurious spa, or getting a good night's rest away from home, making sure each individual guest is taken care of is paramount. Also, the industry uses artificial intelligence allows you to personalize every aspect of a guest team. It's all about creating a unique experience that tailors to each guest of a family. But what are the qualifications required for hospitality industry? The qualifications required for hospitality industry are the candidates who have passed 10 plus 2 in any discipline are eligible to certificate, diploma and undergraduate hospitality management courses. For admission to PG diploma and postgraduate hospitality management courses, the candidate must have passed the graduation from a recognized university. Shira, can you tell us the skills required for hospitality industry? Skills required for hospitality industry. Hospitality and tourism is one industry that can be incredibly rewarding career choices. However, it is one of the most demanding career paths to take. It is important to recognize the right set of core skills in order to succeed. The skills required for hospitality industry are customer service, communication, initiatives, resilience, and cultural awareness. Heyman, can you tell me the salary package for hospitality industry? Yes, the salary package for the hospitality industry ranges from 10 lakhs to 15 lakhs per annum, but it depends upon your skills and experience. Heyman, do you know what is the future of hospitality industry? The Indian hospitality industry has shown promising growth from the last couple of years. Even though it was hit hard by the pandemic, it shows demonstrating signs of improvement on various fronts. According to the Indian Bank Equality Foundation, the country expects to welcome about 30.5 million international tourists, generating over $59 billion in revenue. To anyone who is watching this industry closely, these numbers look achievable. After all, India is a home to world fame heritage sites, biogeographic zone, beaches, residing high on such optimism and to control the numbers of tourists, the count of hotels, especially the organized group brand to set to go up. As this industry is growing, this will also make new opportunities and great jobs such as tool package operator, digital marketing manager, development director, etc. Now, we will present a video that will explain the hospitality industry in short. This video is an introduction to the hospitality industry. You will learn the hospitality industry definition, the various sectors contained within it, and its connections to the hotel industry and travel industry. For more tips in hospitality, go to www.magnifyingclass.com. The hospitality industry definition and the travel industry definition are closely connected, but there are also some subtle differences to be aware of. On a basic level, the travel or tourism industry is concerned with services for people who have traveled away from their usual place of residence for a relatively short period of time. Agriculture India is one of the major players in the agriculture sector worldwide and it is the primary source of livelihood for about 58% of India's population. Agriculture sector in India holds a record for second largest agricultural land in the world, generating employment for about half of the country's population. Thus, farmers become an integral part of the sector to provide us with means of sustenance. Good afternoon everybody present here. Today, class 9 faith presents to you agriculture. India is one of the major players in the agriculture sector worldwide and is the primary source of livelihood for about 58% of India's population. It has the world's largest cattle herd, largest area planted to wheat, rice and cotton. 
and it is a major producer of spices and spices in the world. Thus, farmers become an integral part to provide us with the means of sustenance. Consumer spending in India will return to growth in 2021. Push the pandemic and compression expanding by as much as 6.6%. The Indian food industry is poised for produce growth, increasing its contribution to world food trade every year due to its immense potential for value addition, particularly within the food processing industry. The Indian food processing industry accounts for 32% of the total food market, one of the largest industries in India, and is ranked fifth in terms of production, consumption, export, and expected growth. We will now present a short clip on Shark Tank. We have Dhruv as Rohan, Abhay as Vihan, Dhruvil as Piyush Balsan, Ashutosh as Anupam Mithil, Rajneet as Ashneer Grover, and Rudra as Aman Gupta. Urban farmer, 
urban farmer does the work of production, cultivation and development of crops in their home itself. Nanobiotechnologist Nanobiotechnologist is a person who studies the genes and the crops in detail. Our main motto is creating a better society for farmers. Climate factors affect a lot on farms. That is the main factor in doing the farms. How will you tackle it? I have invested in more than 200 companies in last 10 years and I agree with Ashnil that trusting weather factors in India is a huge risk. See Shan, if we, have, if we are going to look from that perspective, then we will always have a fear in working in this field. But we look at the precaution and take our next steps with very important analysis. You guys definitely have a positive attitude. Thank you, Shah. Deal done. This app will definitely create employment opportunities. Thank you, Shah. I would like to thank my father. Because of him, I have accomplished here. I would also like to thank every farmer who does their work with dedication. Thank you, participants. We would like Mrs. Varda Petsi to share her valuable contribution with our students. Respected Father, Rekel, Joseph, teachers, uh, dear students, and uh, parents who are uh, sitting behind. Uh, you know, I have been working for 34 years. And the last 25 years, I was a consultant. So when you're a consultant, you work across different companies. Um, so, you know, I have visited mines. You have, you have to go right deep inside, right, for coal mines. I have uh, visited oil rigs. So I still remember when I had to visit the Panna Mukta which is about 200 kilometers away. I had to take a helicopter and fly in the middle of ocean. And I'm scared of water, right? And when you land at the rig, so it's like a platform, and the helicopter drops you. You look down, you only see water. And I've been there, and I went into the rigs, and I saw oil, which is black color this thing. I have been to farms, so when I saw the agriculture presentation, uh, it took me back uh, in the year 98-99 when Mahindra, uh, Mahindras were setting up a company called Mahindra Shublab. And we were setting up what you, know, you could call a, a retail store for farmers. Okay. And the idea was a farmer would walk in and he could buy. What does a farmer need? Where is the farming team? What does the farmer need? Seeds. Pesticides. Fertilizers. Machinery. So water is not available in the retail store, but everything else was available. And uh, I still remember, and I'm going to share this with all of you, I still uh, remember going with a young agriculture professional from uh, Irma. So Irma runs an MBA program for rural management. Going with him uh, to a place near Amritsar and talking to uh, a very big farmer. So in north, no, you have farmers who have lots of acres of land and holding a conversation with him in terms of, please allow us to set up this store. And uh, when we walked into his uh, house, 
he was not there he comes out comes back from his field visit and uh, you know the, what does he do the first thing he does he takes out from his pocket a gun puts it on the table and then he says madam and sir so there is this young management graduate main aapke liye kya karu dar lagta hai but we did have a good conversation so as i listened to this presentation i was really reflecting back on all the companies i have visited so media industry today is a large industry and very uh, well recognized and i think the impact of media was very visible um, i saw the karan johar show in action here i saw kapil uh, sharma and i was missing something and that got completed when i saw shark tank right so i'm glad to see all of you watching uh, shark tank so another story from the media industry uh, again uh, 20 25 years 22 years back when balaji telefilms was set up you remember you know who which is what is balaji telefilms does anybody know what is balaji telefilms do you know ekta kapoor right she set it up who is ekta kapoor maybe the parents will know jitendra's daughter she is the first one who set up a big studio and um, you know uh, in the corporate world your salary increases by years of experience and the role in the media your uh, salary increases by trp so i still remember and you know it is after 15 16 years of work ex that was my first uh, exposure and um, i was meeting with a young uh, script writer all of you know what's a script writer right serial ka script likhte hain so here was this young girl and i was talking to her and she told me that you know when i first came i came as an assistant script writer what does an assistant script writer do the main script writer writes and she cleans up she details out she will clean up the language she will be sitting in while the studio uh, shooting is happening and she will look at what is done so it is really she started with a 10000 rupees salary thereafter the script writer fell sick so media industry is very tightly managed this they asked will you write the script for this next episode she said sure i will write it so she spent overnight she wrote the script and that script generated a great trp what is trp ha huh? so what does it mean most of us watch it right so her salary went up from 10000 to a lakh and the script writer who went on leave went on permanent leave because she was writing well from 1 lakh it went to 2 lakhs because trps were going up and so the media industry is a little different from all the other industries um so you know i'm just sharing some of the experiences to tell you that you know you all are the fortunate generation who have exposure to so many industries and who have an opportunity to build careers in so many industries what are the factors that stop you you know the first one and that's addressed to the parents behind i am also a parent so i relate to some of it is often we 
don't, you know, as parents, we want our children to do engineering, medicine. And I would really like all of you to look at all these 12 industries, and there are another 15 more which you can actually explore. Uh, one of the good things which have happened in the last uh, few years, and I'm hoping in the next, by 2030 it will change, is that you can actually explore and look at doing different things. So look at that uh, opportunity. Look at doing different things. We don't all need to become engineers. Or all of us don't need to become computer science, science students. So programming is a skill which is going to go away. How many of you have heard of chat GPI? Chat, chat GPT, right? Have you worked at it? I hope you don't do your homework on that. You know who is more worried about chat GPT? Teachers. Yes, you can pick up stuff from there. So, you know, now the teachers have to learn a new skill, which is how to identify what is generated by chat GPT and what is generated by you as students. Right? So, therefore, uh, technology is going to play a critical role. So, irrespective of whatever course you do, you will have to study and uh, you will have to learn technology. Uh, you know, what made me very happy was uh, some of the presentations that were done. So I want to ask uh, the sports team. I, I, you know, I'm not sure which class was it. The sports team which interviewed the teachers. Where is that? How long did you take to prepare that video? Five days. Can't hear. OK, so it's a long video. Five days, right? If you ask me or even your parents to prepare that video, we will take a much longer time. So very nice to see that video. And some of the presentations which you have made on your own, I think, uh, again, shows your ability to be brief. So I think there's a lot of efforts which the teachers have taken in terms of helping the students. Yes or no? In preparing the script. So very, very happy about it. And. Um, you know, just as there is careers and opportunities to do things, there are a couple of skills we will need to learn or we will need to constantly de demonstrate irrespective of what's our professional career. And I saw that getting demonstrated here. So, Father, I really felt happy. One was creativity. All of you looked at the same topic and did it so very differently. So, that was very nice. Be creative, be innovative. Because only when we innovate, something new comes up. Um, the other was being sensitive to each other, being considerate to each other. Uh, how did I notice that? I think some people did forget their script. Yes or no? Yes, but uh, the team members were very supportive. And as an audience, we did not realize. So the empathy and the inclusiveness was very great. And finally, there was humor. So don't forget the ability to laugh and being uh, in life. That, that's very, very important. So with that, I think. Anything else you would like me to cover? 
So all the best. There is a beautiful life ahead of you. I wish we could track each one of you as you go forward and see how you grow and bloom in life. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Varda. I would like to extend my deep thanks and utmost appreciation on behalf of the Don Bosco family and the Mike and Show team to all the participants and the dignities who have made this event possible. A sincere word of acknowledgement to the Mike and Show co team and its stakeholders for their continuous mentoring and guidance to our students. We applaud and recognize your hard work and dedication towards this institution. We invite Mrs. Rockwell to share her insights on the presentations of the day. Good afternoon, students and parents, Father Crispino, my fellow um, guests uh, from industry. I was blown away. I was super excited to see the boys to men transition. Seriously, guys, a big round of applause for each and every team. <laughs> Give yourselves a big round of applause. This was a fabulous show of what young boys uh, can be capable of in the future. You know, the research says all of you will have 17 different jobs in your lifetime. Not a job for life like people of my generation. We all worked in maybe one or two companies and maybe the parents are the same. But you will have 17 different jobs in your life. And there will be jobs in the future that are not there right now. And this, what you've done today, took us to a lovely journey into the future of what are the opportunities and what you need to do as young people to be happy and successful in life. Like Father said, when your vocation is also your career, then it's magic you uh, have a very happy and successful future. Now, I was just talking to my um, colleagues here, and I think we'd like to track you. I'd like to see you in 2030. Maybe, Father, we should have a reunion here <laughs> of this batch. And I'd like to see which professions, which careers that you get into. And um, maybe through my Kensho itself, Stay in touch so we can see what you're doing and maybe you can mentor your juniors as you go along in this journey. So uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody and a special thank you to the wonderful career guidance team. So I'd like to actually call upon Father Crispino to present the certificates to all our lovely teachers. Um, can everyone please come up? Sonali De Silva. Just help me. Hemanya Thauli. Dipti Shah. Hemant Kulkarni. Sharon George. Jasmine Thomas. Can everyone come up please? Ravina De Souza. Angel, Catherine, and Nelson D'Souza. <laughs> Big round of applause. Keep it going. Come on. Who's this? Father. Here, here, come. Uh. Vandana, Angel, Sharon, oh, Ravina, Sharon.
Sharon. Heman. Dipti. Who else? Jasmine. Huh? She can't walk, okay. And Shanali. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thank you, teachers. This program runs in the school because of the commitment, hard work, and dedication of this wonderful team of teachers. So, give it up for them. Let's have a group photo. Group photo. Pauline. Pauline, you didn't get a certificate, but she does all the hard work behind the scenes coordinating this wonderful group. Sharon, go that side. Thank you, teachers. Or rather, I should call you career practitioners because they've all been trained as career practitioners based on an Australian framework. Yeah. Now we will have a symbolic distribution of certificate to the students. All the students who presented, can you all together come here and without making a noise, of course. I know you're hungry, so we can do this quick. All students who presented, please come over here. Line yourselves, some of you go on top. We have certificates for you too. The rest of you, can you please they are going to get it's a certificate of competency which shows that they are self-aware of their potential they are aware of the job market they know how to plan and make decisions that's what this means and they showed us what they're capable of so all the students here are going to be given this certificate and I invite uh, Mrs. Chitra Kamath George she is from the government of Western Australia who have an office in Mumbai. Now Western Australia is one of the largest states in Australia. Perth is the capital city. Some of you may have friends and relatives there. And it's a thriving economy. That means a lot of industries that you saw there is actually growing in Western Australia. So those of you who are interested in working there, studying there, there's a lot of exciting opportunities in Perth and Western Australia. So as a symbolic gesture, maybe you can give some certificates to maybe the first row and everybody else, you just take a certificate, it may not be yours, take it and hold it and we'll have a group photo, okay? So symbolically, just give it to one person. One. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Chitra. Now the rest, just give it to everyone. Students, just take one. It may not be yours. We just want it for the photo. Then you give the right certificates to each other.
Father Crispino D'Souza, Mrs. Varda Petsi, Mrs. Chitra George, and Mrs. Raquel Shroff for their presence in our midst today. Every day holds the possibility of a miracle. So keep hoping for the best and keep shining. And thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you for making this event memorable. Have a good Have a day. Good day. Do not move your seat and take a prayerful posture. So Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty. Amen.